everyone. Nice to see you this afternoon. Thank you for joining me on this very last session that we're having. Uh, I know that it's between me and you getting to leave, so uh, I will try to make this interesting and helpful for you to see what types of jobs are available in data science. And I'm going to be able to answer your question on what skills employers are looking for for a data scientist. Uh, that's a perfect setup for me, so I appreciate that. My name is Jeffrey Fouts. I'm the Associate Director of Career Services at the School of Information Studies here at Syracuse University. Um, I'm also in charge of data analytics at the school as well. Um, I handle all of the student data when students graduate from the iSchool. Um, I track them, if you will and find out where they're going. And then I um, keep track of that data and then I share that data with the school and with the dean and all of the uh, directors. So that's that's my role that I play. I speak with students on a daily basis. Um, uh, my specialty is graduate students who are interested in data. So I talk with students all day long on preparing the materials to get ready for a data analyst, data scientist type roles, um, helping you with interviews, and when you do get an offer, I then help you negotiate. Awesome. So um, those are all the different types of things that um, Career Services has to offer. So as I go through the presentation today, if you do have any questions, if you have any comments, I encourage you to ask them or to say them. This is a workshop that I just open up for you. So if there's anything you'd like to talk about as we go through, uh, please feel comfortable to do that, to say that. Um, you're welcome to talk about anything you'd like to talk about. Okay? All right. So having said that, we are talking about the current and future state of applied data science. That's going to be our focus. What is this thing we have up here? Is this uh, for online? Yeah, because I'm going to be reading. All right, so data scientists, they create business value through informed decision making and effective product management. The role encompasses different activities, which vary depending on the business needs, the business size, and the business resources. And as you can imagine, I'm going to be sharing a lot of data with you today. Um, it's always helpful to show you graphs and charts versus actual numbers, and I encourage you when you do get into these types of roles, data visualization is very, very important. And you're going to see it's much easier to see it in a graph than it is to see numbers. Now, having said that, I'm sharing numbers with you. So <laughs> we'll start there, and then I'll show you some graphs. Um, so what do these numbers mean? The employment rate for data scientists is expected to grow by 36% from 2021 to 2031. So I've done some research um, on the industry and I'm sharing what the research is telling us. So 36% is pretty robust. Does anybody know what the average growth rate is for the average job? That's a great guess. Yeah, it's actually 5%. 5%. So 36% growth over that time span um, is pretty amazing. So that's something to think about. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. That's despite AI and Because it's expected that AI will take over. So we're going to actually touch upon that, but um, yeah, we're focusing on applied data science yes. specifically. Yeah. Great. Uh, Forty-nine percent of the job ads on, on on LinkedIn are in the IT and tech industry, so that's pretty interesting as well. Almost fifty percent of the jobs that are available are in the IT industry. Six percent of the data scientist job offers on LinkedIn are in anybody know the state? Good guess. Not New York, California. That's right. California. So, and that's the highest, by the way. And um, that's been true now for a couple of years. So, California, as you can imagine, um, has a lot of the data science jobs that are available. 
However, there's a lot of companies that have left California recently. Does anybody know where they've gone to? <laughs> not say New York. It's not New York. It's Austin, Texas. Yeah, they went to Austin, Texas. That is true. Uh, the most in-demand technical skills for data science experts are Python and SQL, which I will show you. So, um, on ge in general, on average, most people who are looking for data scientists in their organization are looking for um, people who have skills in Python and SQL. And I, it, I'm going to show you that it's actually Python, but I would argue um, that SQL actually is probably more important than Python is at this point. Entry level positions accounted for 55% of job offers. So that's interesting too, especially for you as students, um, or most of you as students. 55% um, of those job offers were entry level positions, just starting out positions. Uh, the average salary for a data scientist in the US is 125, 242. So it is a pretty robust um, industry as far as salary goes. Keep in mind this is the average. This doesn't mean you're going to make 125, 242, but the potential is there for you to make that. All right. So let's take a look at this graph. Now, there has been a down um, play in jobs uh, recently. And if we were talking, having this conversation last year, I would tell you that um, we're in trouble. There's a, the economy is bad, and um, a lot of employers are not hiring. As a matter of fact, a lot of employers were laying off at this time last year. The problem is that they overhired for COVID. They thought that everyone was going to continue to use technology to the rate that they were using it during COVID. And that wasn't the case. A lot of companies are calling people back to the office, um, which means that they don't have to use technology at home. Um, so they had, they found themselves having to lay off a lot of people. So what's happening in the industry is not only are students going up against other students when it comes to finding jobs, but they're also going up against now professionals who lost their jobs, who have multiple years of experience, um, trying to go for the same types of jobs. So um, we've struggled through that. Um, I think that there is an uptick in um, jobs that are available now. And as you can see, this graph is pointing out, um, the jobs are getting better. Um, there's a tool that we use called Handshake, which is a tool that houses jobs and internships specifically for Syracuse University students. And if you go into Handshake right now and type in data analyst as a position, you're going to find over a thousand opportunities available. So the opportunities are there, and we're finding that the market is getting a lot better um, than it was just a year ago. Okay, so I have some data to show you for um, even as recent as August of 2023. Um, looking at hiring year over year shows just how far the industry still needs to go. Year over year openings are still much lower compared to 2022. Data science and data engineering roles haven't even come close to rebounding from the late 2022, early 2023 mass layoffs in Silicon Valley. The one standout is machine learning. Um, where positions managed to increase by 16% year over year. However, this could just be a variance given the relative rarity of this position compared to other job openings. This is a relative new position that's opening up. Um, and if you look at the hard numbers, you're, you might be thinking 16% is pretty high, it's pretty good. Um, it actually went from 618 job openings to now 722. So it's a little over a hundred more jobs, which boosts it up to 16% rate. Right? So it looks impressive, but when you break it down by number, it's really not that many more openings that are available. Okay. Now take a look at this chart. You're going to see that there are data scientists, data engineer, data analyst, and machine learning jobs. 
Um, the one thing that I tell students is when you are looking for a job in the data field, I encourage you to look at all three of those job positions because um, companies don't know the difference between those three positions. So a lot of times they're going to advertise for a data engineer, whereas if you look at the requirements of the job, what they're really looking for is a data analyst. So you're, you're better off if you search all of those jobs and don't judge a position by the title, judge it by the requirements. So I'm going to encourage you to check out all three of those positions if you're looking for a job in this field. Um, looking at this chart, a return to pre-2022 layoffs isn't immediately in the cards, but the situation is improving. However, the class of 2024 should keep an eye on the rearview mirror. There's been huge growth in business analytics and data science programs. As the funnel continues to get more crowded at the top, job competition will only grow, especially if the market doesn't bounce back aggressively. So basically what that means is there's more and more colleges out there that are realizing the value of, of having a data type program in their school. They're going to see more and more students getting into those types of roles, into those programs, which means there's going to be a lot more competition as well. So what we're hoping is that the job market keeps up with the amount of talent that we're going to have available. Yeah. Um, I will share that with you. I, it's a combination, it's a combination of resources that I'm using. Okay, so let's look at the top 10 companies based on number of openings that they have. So if you're in the market and you're looking for a data job, these may be some companies that you're interested in looking at. You're going to notice that the IT software development and recruiting sectors are predominant. Diverse Links is a staffing and consulting company, and right now they have 200 job offers available. Recruiting from Scratch is a recruiting service provider in the IT sector with 31 jobs available. Accenture is an IT company with 27 jobs available. Synergistic is a software development, IT recruiting, and upskill firm with 24 jobs. Discover is finance with 23 jobs. Deloitte the largest professional services network with 14 jobs, Cobblestone Energy, an independent trading firm with 10 jobs, Server is a peer-to-peer -peer payments technology business with 7 jobs, Aditi Consulting is a recruitment company with 5 jobs, and Pacific Northwest, one of the U.S. Department of Energy's national laboratories with 5 jobs. So, just to give you an idea of the companies, now I will tell you, if you've never thought about getting into the energy sector um, for data, to me, that's the most exciting sector. That's my opinion. And um, the reason why I say that is because um, I had the event, the um, availability of forming a energy company, and they were showing us how they use their data. Um, and one of the things that they showed us was a grid of a neighborhood. And on that grid, you could see there was one pocket where there was like a red light showing up. And what this was showing was someone had just purchased an electric car. And they were using more electricity than everyone else around the neighborhood was. And they were able to determine how much electricity that they were using. And they had to determine how much electricity they had to give. So they're trying to determine if this is becoming a trend, they're going to have to build up their network to be able to handle the electric output that people are going to need, right? And they were showing us how they were using that data to determine that. And it's just fascinating. Like, if you're into data, man, that's the place to go. It's really, really exciting stuff that they're doing with data. I encourage you to check it out. See for yourself if that's something that you're interested in. And you can see that there's a couple companies in this list that deal with energy, so that's a good sign as well. Okay, so here's the number of job offers per industry. So you're going to see that job offers span 50 seconds, 50 different sectors, but they're not evenly distributed. The most significant demand is in the IT and technology sector, 
which according to LinkedIn is 49% of the jobs that they have listed is in the IT field. The financial services and staffing recruiting sectors are far behind, um, accounting for only 14% and 11% of open positions respectively. 4% of job offers are in the industrial sector and 3% are in healthcare. With 18 openings, defense accounts for only 2%. Biotech, education, logistics, oil, entertainment, retail, energy, and real estate only have about 1% of job openings each. So you can imagine that they are just getting into the field um, of data. They're just now realizing the value that the data can bring to these types of organizations. So in my view, you're going to see more and more jobs opening up in these sectors um, once they start to get more mature like other companies are and they realize what data can do for them. The variety of industries looking for data scientists shows that more businesses recognize the benefits of data science. The best industry for your data science career might not be the one with the most job openings. So consider other options too. So that's why I give you the example of energy. Maybe you never thought of working for an energy company before, but I can tell you they're doing some cool things with their data. All right, this um, chart is a little hard to see, so I'm just going to briefly explain it to you. It's basically showing you where the data science jobs are. And we already talked about California has the most. Um, they, the percent of all of their ads for jobs, 13.6% of them are for data science. And there's currently 110 jobs as of um, my data that I found that are available right now in California. Um, Texas is next, Virginia is next, and New York comes right up after it. There you go, my man, got New York. New Jersey, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Illinois, Washington, and finally we end with Georgia. So compared to the 2020 data, nothing has drastically changed. California has been at the top since we've been looking at the data. Um, next came Virginia, Washington, and New York. The top 10 states for data scientists are the same, just in a slightly different order. So um, hopefully you're interested in working in one of those states because those are the states that um, consistently have the most openings for data science jobs. All right, now let's get into what can employers expect from a data science candidate. So these are the types of degrees that employers are looking at for people to have when they're getting into this field. Data science is a relatively new field, although it's becoming much more mature now than it has been in the past. I mean, it's been around now, I would say, for a good five years, at least. Um, and so employers don't expect every person they hire to have a data science degree. As a matter of fact, when companies were first realizing that they had, that they wanted to use their data for more than they were using it for, they would just pick people in their organization and they would say, you're a data analyst now. We want you to work on our data. So the problem that the companies were having, and this is what they tell me, employers, is Jeff, we have a lot of data people on our staff. And what they're able to do is pull a lot of the data from our records versus that we hold data. And what they do is take all that data and throw it on my desk and say, here's your data. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that data. That's what they tell me. So they're looking for people that can do three things. And this is what I encourage you to focus on if you want to get into the data field. Analyze the data. They need someone who can look at the data and figure out what the data is telling them. What are our pro best products, worst products, best areas, worst areas, best time of year, worst time of year. They need someone to visualize the data. As we talked about, they'd much rather see it and charge the numbers. And finally, they need someone who can present the data. It's very important. They need someone who can present to executive level employees what the data means. So analyze, visualize, and present. If you can do those three things, and you can do those three things well, you're going to be fine. And those are the types of things 
that I encourage students to highlight on their resumes because that's what I know employers are looking for because that's what they tell me. Okay, so even though they don't require a data science degree, they do prefer candidates with higher education in a related field. So you can see they're also looking at students who are going into statistics or computer science, um, engineering, mathematics, even economics. Um, data engineering to a certain degree, and even architecture too, which is interesting. Um, so really, they're looking for, I mean, if you're, if you're in architecture, but you can still show them that you can analyze, visualize, and present data, who cares what degree you're in, you can prove that you can do those things, they're going to want you on their staff. Okay, so here's the skills that employers are looking for. So as the graph shows, Python and SQL lead the way uh, 100%. They're a must for every data science role, even if they aren't explicitly mentioned in the job description, which, by the way, most job descriptions have either Python or SQL or both. The number of job ads mentioning Java and other software engineering tools is increasing because of the growing importance of data engineering and machine learning um, in the data field. So my view from what I've seen, if you have, I always tell students, if you come away with five skills and five things, you're going to be fine. So Python, SQL, and R, those are the three things on working with data. You have, you have those skills, you're going to be fine. But also, Tableau and Power BI. If you have those five skills, you're fine. Like, I'm going to be able to get you a job. But you've got to be able to have those five skills, and you've got to know those five skills cold. Because in an interview, you're going to go through what's called a chemical round, and the employer is going to expect you to open up your laptop and start coding in Python. And if you can't do that, then you're not going to be any good for the employer. So you got to be able to do things on the fly. you got to know it that well to be able to use it. So I always tell students, you got to be able to use it without using Google. That's your, that's your focus. All right. Not only is Python and SQL important, but as I mentioned, also Tableau and Power BI, and you can never get away from Microsoft Excel. Yes? Microsoft Excel is still very, very important for you to know, which is why a lot more schools, even here in Syracuse, offer the Excel certification for free. And if you're in a school and you're not certified in Excel, you're crazy. There's no job that you're going to take, I'm telling you, where you're not using Excel for something. You're going to be using it for something. You need to know Excel. Like, that's baseline. Everyone should have that on their resume. Everyone should have Microsoft Excel certified on their resume. So, iSchoolers out there, who's my iSchoolers? Raise your hand. All right, I'm looking at you. I have a photographic memory, by the way. I see all of you. You better be Excel certified by the time you graduate. It's free. All right, check this out. This one should make you happy. Salaries. Let's talk about money for a little bit. Naturally, data scientist salaries depend on their seniority level, but even if you have the experience and expertise, obtaining a high level position is challenging because there's just not a lot of high level positions available. And as we talked about, over 50% of the jobs that are available is entry level, right? In addition to the high requirements and expectations, they are fewer than junior. They are, they are fewer than junior positions, so the competition is tough to get one of those positions. But man, if you can get into it, it does pretty well. Good, good salary. You make this salary in Syracuse, you are king, queen. You can have anything you want here. Pay off your house. So pay off your house in Syracuse. <laughs> Yeah, my house. Great. All right, so let's talk about iSchool specifically now, um, since when you raised your hands, most of you were 
high school students, not all. Uh, data science experts are needed in every job sector, not just in technology. As a matter of fact, the five biggest tech companies, Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Facebook, only employ one half of 1% of U.S. employees. Think about that. One half of 1%. So you people who want to go to Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Facebook, you can see why it's so hard to get into those companies. Everybody wants to get in there, but it's only one half of 1%, right? However, in order to break into these high paying and demand roles and advanced education is generally required, data scientists are highly educated, 88% have at least a master's degree, 46% have PhDs. And while there are notable exceptions, a very strong educational background is usually required to develop the depth of knowledge necessary to be a data scientist. This is why the School of Information Studies has invested in not only a master's degree in applied data science, but also just recently got approved to offer a bachelor's degree in applied data ana analytics as well. So that's pretty exciting for our undergrad students. Um, definitely a good thing for our grad students that we have that as great. All right, I told you I did data for our students. So here's a four-year overview of how our students have done. These are, this is just for data science. Our students who have, who have graduated with an applied data science degree. So placement rate means that they either got a job or they went back to school. So if you got a graduate degree, most of them got jobs. There's one or two that went back to school. So you can see that we're in the high 90s, um, especially in 2022, we did pretty well. 2020 was during COVID, so it wasn't as great as we had hoped it would be. You can also see that the average salary for our data scientist students, it has drastically gone up as well. So these are Stats that our students have told me that they have got. They told me they got a job, and then they told me this is what their salary is. Okay, so this isn't something that I made up. This is something that students are telling me. And it's the average, the average salary. So you can see the gray line is the average overall for all grad students. And then you can see the orange line is what data scientists are doing or have done. Here's our top employers, just showing you the top four, Amazon, Blend360, Deloitte, EY, and Goldman Sachs. Those are our five, and it's been the same for two years running. Um, these are the companies that are hiring our grad students. Now keep in mind, you guys, that these companies do not hire like 10 grad students, okay? It's like we, we have a lot of companies that are onesie twosies. They hire one student or two students. So um, it's not like I'm going to say Amazon hired five of our students last year. They they hired one or two students. But uh, overall, these are the companies that we consistently see that are hiring our high school students in data, in data science. Used to be EY and Deloitte was solid, solid grad across the board, 20 grad students, no problem. And then a couple of years ago, they completely flipped the script. And they said, we're not hiring grad students anymore. We're hiring undergrads. Yeah, it's really weird. So now we, if you look at our data, it's now it's 20 undergrads and it's one grad that they hire each year. It's really weird. So we are telling um, enrollment, stop saying that we're, you're going to go to EY and Deloitte because they only hire, they only sponsor certain positions. They don't sponsor a lot anymore like they used to. Okay, so finally, oh, perfect timing, man. Is there a demand for data scientists specialists? And as you can see, there is a growth chart from 2021 to 2031. Data-driven decision-making is becoming the norm as more and more companies realize the importance of big data for business growth. With this realization comes the need for specialists to help leverage 
the informational gold mines small, mid sized and big businesses sit on, the amount of data, and the need for someone to generate meaningful insights from it is likely to continue. So the data scientist's job will continue to be in demand. In fact, the demand is still growing. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics estimated that the employment rate for data scientists will grow by 36% from 2021 to 2031. This is a mind-blowing increase compared to the average growth rate as we said of 5%. And for all those skeptics out there, sure rapid technology development will inevitably lead to the automation of some of the data scientist functions. We see this happening for many roles. People use ChatGPT to write code, generate marketing, and business strategies, and so on. But behind every new technology is a highly skilled team of tech and big data experts. So the next incremental jobs will be those involved in creating such technologies. The skills required to succeed might change, but the future of data scientists is bright. Data and business analysts, machine learning and data engineers, and other data science roles will continue to be in demand, in my opinion. That is the current and future state of getting a job in data science. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead. You think the outlook like for like the city of Syracuse and the surrounding area. I know that like there's like the Syracuse surge and there's like Micron is supposed to be coming and all that stuff. What do you think it looks like around here for the winter? So I think the future is just as bright here as it is in any other place. I think that companies here are also realizing the value of data. We are establishing a lot of relationships with local companies. Um, who come into our career fairs and they come in and table in our lobbies I'm looking for data scientists. So um, we're noticing more and more that they are getting more interested in especially what the iSchool is doing. Um, unfortunately, the iSchool doesn't have as good a reputation as engineering or Whitman does, not in terms of um, you know anything we did bad, but in terms of just they don't really know what we do. So once we can, ex can educate them on what it is that we have to offer, um, we're getting a lot more interest. And I can tell you that Micron for us is going to be huge. So when Micron comes in, um, they're going to be looking at engineering and the high school to help them with a lot of the jobs that they need to fill. Yeah, um, we're all very excited about that. Yeah. I think we are in the direct college right now. So, what's like sports? Is there increase in sports analytics over years? Is there been a downfall? Are there specific areas in sports which are like more like exciting? Like more jobs are coming, whereas in other sectors it's not that much in sports. Like let's say, I mean, we have more than other ones. There is the one more. Yeah, multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, two. Oh, yeah. So from that from that point to now, still they're realizing the value of data, right? Every organization uses data to that extent today. So you can go to any team, and they are using data to the fullest extent. So there's no, there has been no drop off when it comes to that. It's huge. It's very popular. Uh, and as a matter of fact, um, we just had an undergrad who went to the New York Rangers as a data analyst. He just got it this summer. So he's very excited about that. So um, the opportunities are there. And if you're interested, I can connect you to him. Uh, I think this gentleman had a question. Yes, as far as uh, making an investment in the company, yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to give you my opinion. 
Um, so I have 24 years of, of experience in the IT field. That's where I came before I came to Syracuse. Um, I also talk to recruiters on a regular basis. Um, you don't need a graduate degree. You just don't. You can, you'll be just fine getting a bachelor's degree and being able to be successful, especially in the data industry. So, um, the students who are getting graduate degrees is because the programs weren't offered in the areas that they're in. But if, if an undergraduate data science program is available, you absolutely want to jump on that. 100%. Um, now, I would say for the higher level roles of maybe data engineering, um, data scientist to a certain degree, um, a PhD can certainly help you in that role as far as making more money goes, but you can still reach that level um, just from your the base degree that you get and the experience of doing that job. That's my view. I guess great minds think alike. It was kind of like what I was going to ask, but more specific to machine learning modeling, ML engineering. I find that I'm I'm in my last class for flight and science. Okay. And so I started looking at jobs. Yeah. You know, and first of all, it seems like you have to have all those skills in one person. You know, the you have there plus more. That's that's the impression that I get. Okay. That is that when it comes to mo you know, I felt like the entire flight data science course was at least sixty percent focused on machine learning. Okay. okay. So okay, I'm gonna get out of here and get a job in machine learning. Yeah. But while looking for the job, I got the impression, and I could be wrong, and that's why I'm asking the question finally. Yeah. When in the place. Um do you feel like there is a preference for PhD graduates when it comes to working with machine learning engineering and, and you know, just tweaking the models, working with the models in general? Or the master's of size. I mean, what's the real point of view? Yeah. So um, I, I have not seen a need for PhDs. I haven't had um, companies clamoring looking for PhDs. So at all. So my answer would be absolutely not. I would not invest in that. You don't need to. Um, my <laughs> argument with that. <laughs> my um, my argument to you would be. Um, I can take the skills that you have and I can help you get to where you need to be. Great, I want to talk to you. Yeah, I'll so there's a, there's a way to do things that's going to help you. So oftentimes it's not the, what you, the skill that you have, it's how are you translating them over so that employers are recognizing those. Yeah. And those are things that we can help you with in career services. All right, we go, guys. All right, have a great weekend. Enjoy today. It's going to get cold. If you don't have a your coat, make sure you go out and buy one. You guys know who I'm talking to. And I will see you at, I will see you at the high school or on campus. Thank you very much.